Epic has just added custom timer widget UI support in UEFN. And in this video, I'm just going to go over how you can set it up and a few little cool things like making a little animation, something like that. So let's just get to it. Now to get started, uh, we're going to go in the drawer and we're going to find uh, the device right here, the timer device, and we'll bring it out. And here we are. Now, previously, this device would be would be how you make, uh, you know, timers, obviously. So inside of this device, there's a bunch of options like duration or the duration of the timer. This is in seconds. As you can see, it changes. So this is one second and then maximum would be an hour or 60 minutes or or about like 3600 seconds i'm gonna keep it at 60 because of a minute but pretty nice then you can do the count direction so you can either do a countdown or count up so you're either counting down or up i'm gonna keep this as countdown start to game start makes the so the timer will begin at game start there's two advanced tabs but uh the first one is just for the custom widget we'll begin in a minute and uh if you go to the if you go to the other one you can change the timer name so i'm gonna call this uh timer i'm gonna call this timer can interact is an option if you go in game where you can interact with the device usually uh usually just when this off but if you do have it on you can do only start only complete or yes and you can change the interact time which is the amount of time it takes for the player to start or stop the timer if they interact with it next is the activating team so which team is going to activate the timer you make that any or you can make a team index and which team on the index you can also do applies to and everyone is for everybody and then player is just for the player individually if you don't have a start on game start and you have a per player Whenever the timer starts, it will only start for the player. So for example, if a player presses a button, the timer will go down only for them. And then let's say if another player comes over and then presses the same button, like 10 seconds after the first player, their timer would be 10 seconds behind. The timer will have two different times for the both, both players. But if you turn this on, it's going to be global and it's going to be for everybody. I'm going to keep it to everyone. Success on timer end. Basically what this means is that on the on the channel down here called on success and on failure, if you have, um, if you have this on, if the timer ends, uh, it'll, it'll say success, and obviously, if if it's if it you know somehow stops or something, it will be on failure. But if you turn this off, then that you will be still be swapped. So uh, if you if it ends, it's gonna be a failure, and then if it you know if it if you stop it somehow, it's gonna be success. So that's how you know. I'm gonna keep this as uh, success and timer. Then completion behavior. What I can you can change the different types. So you can either disable, stop, reset, or restart. So when this ends, you can either disable the device, which will completely disable the device. You can stop the device, which will stop it at its final state. But you'll need to manually reset it here if you want to do it again in this channel here. Or you can do reset, which uh, will then, if you want to end, it will reset timer and stop. And then restart is going to reset the timer and then start again with it end. So it's going to be on looping. Now you can change this now, whatever you want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do stop. Then visible in game is what do you see in game? So it's it's this right here. This is what you see in game. And uh, the reason why it's only timer or all, you can see the name here if you have it on all. Or you can just make it hidden. So if I press G, which is game view you can see it then our timer color is the color of the timer so you can change it to different colors so we can make whatever color you want i'm just gonna put this white you can display time in minutes and seconds or just seconds so like that's 60. you can make a message for when the timer has not started when the timer is running and when it's paused so you can do like whatever so you can say timer not started i think you do timer running and then i don't know timer paused there we go when the timer is on success with, um you know is there is there a score a penalty or success i don't know that. and if it fails is there like well, what else in the penalty you can also um if there's let's say the timer ends and there's let's say if, if, you, if you need to stop the timer before it ends and you stop at 10 seconds this is how many points per second you can give the player so let's say if you stop 10 seconds you get like 10 points if you have it on one or they get 20 if it's two 30 if it's three and it depends on how much seconds are left at still in the timer when it when the, when the player stops the timer or whatever show and hood is important because uh, if you don't have that on it's like a show and hood which you're going to do later uh timer label style this is a matter for making a custom HUD because you're going to be over on all of this, but you can change it if you want. Use persistence is how you'd make it so it saves between game sessions. Auto save is, is pretty important. If you want to auto save, auto save when would be on exit or always. And on exit basically means um, if you leave the game. And then always would be just anytime throughout the match. It'll just constantly be saving. You also have the option to auto load, uh, which will auto load the thing. And you can also do auto load when they're joining or always. And then you got urgency, which basically is uh, at the last few seconds, you can ha have the timer go in urgent mode and stuff like that and you can have the mode time and you have the urgency text and you can do this all in the widget ui i'll do that later the text doesn't really matter for that but the time does you can also do audio effects um depending on if you want on that on or off i'm gonna turn that off because i'm gonna add in my own later in the ui if instigating player is not present you can either do random player or empty instigator which is let's say for example if a player starts a timer they leave the game halfway through and the timer ends and there's still other people in the session and there's a, the timer can either empty instigator or random player you can also do lap time so you can have a lap time 
do lap time style, which is time elapsed or time remaining, depending on what you want. You can also display score update on HUD. Then you have all this. Um, and then you can also do activating class, which is the class who's activating time. So you can have class slots or no class or all or any. And then let's say, for example, if your class changes while the timer is still going, you can turn this on and disable timer failing team or class check. So if, if their team or class change while the timer is going, you can, you can disable the timer or you can just keep it going. And you can also do reset as well. You can reset the timer, depending on what you want. And then as you can see in the functions of start, complete, and all of these really useful uh, functions you can use. And you can also do events like on success, failure, on start of the urgency mode, save, load, and cleared, and all this. Pretty, pretty useful stuff. And that's all the settings of the timer device, but to actually make a custom timer widget UI, what you want to do is you want to go to con drawer and you want to, and you want to right click. You want to go down to user interface and we're going to make a widget blueprint. Now, the next step is we're going to make a user widget. We want to call this timer uh, HUD. We're going to go inside of it. And here we go. Now, once we're in here, uh, first things first, just create a canvas panel. Uh, now, this isn't a comprehensive UI tutorial. This is going to show you how to set up this. Now, usually, first thing you want to do is you want to go down to view bindings and you want to add in a view model and you're going to get the view model for the timer, which is right here. Now, basically, uh, what view models are is a way you can add a functionality from a device and put it into a UI. And if we use a timer, we get the current time, we get the current time in seconds, text, uh, pause, started, urgency, label text, and timer name, and total time in seconds. It's pretty cool. So we'll just select. Once we have this, we're going to just uh, go out of it. There we go. And now this is a, a timer widget. Now, okay, first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to just grab in a text block. It doesn't matter. This is going to be our little timer. This is where our, our number will appear on our screen. It's going to be our timer. I'm going to get bigger. Now, anchoring for this is a bit goofy. Um, it's a bit confusing. I'm going to go over that in it later. But for now, I'm just going to show you how you can animate it. So to actually bind this, what we're going to do is I'm going to go into view bindings and I'm going to just rename this text block. And then we're going to go into view bindings and we're going to add our widget timer. And then in here, we're going to get text of our text block. And, and then we're going to do one way to widget. And then in here, we're then going to find current time and we're going to add that. Now basically what this will do is it's going to add the current time of the timer in uh, minutes and seconds uh, into the text block here. And this is the text. So we can just... Now, once we're done here, you want to go into timer and you want to make sure it starts a game start. And our custom widget class is of timer and we can push our changes. But now if we start our game, as you can see, our timer will begin to go down. Uh, if you saw that for a second there, it said one zero. It didn't have the other zero for some reason. I'm not sure why that happens. And I can also see the timer is also for some reason off to the side of the screen, which is kind of weird. Now, as you can see, obviously here, it's it's, it's in the center. It's, it's in the top center. So why is it off to the side here? It should be up here somewhere. And that is because of the anchor. Now, the anchor works kind of weird when it comes to timer devices. So the timer, uh, the timer device, uh, unlike the HUD message device, and this is kind of like the tracker device too, the HUD can, it doesn't have placements, so you can change the placement of the anchor. If I just grab a HUD message device, yeah, there's an option here that, that this doesn't have, but it kind of needs, but it's called placement. And you can, you can do custom, and then you can then see the screen anchor to uh, all of these different options here. The problem is that this timer, it doesn't have that. If I go with the timer HUD, um, the, t the timer gets always placed in the top here. So what you want to do is you want to move our anchor, place it like right in the middle, and try to keep the center centered and like there ish that will scale it to where it needs to be so if we end the game and we push our changes so now if i start my game you're going to see that the, the placement of the widget is going to be perfectly in the middle and when you look at that it's up there now now actually it's slightly off to the side on the left so probably the best placement uh for it would be maybe like if i make this a number by 10 and then if i center it i i try to make it like perfect so it's, it's off to the left right yeah but so if i put it more on this side that'll probably be more accurate where you want it so there we go that'll be our number for our timer again it's going to actually be it's going to look like 0 colon 10 there we go so it's going to be like there that's probably where we want it there we go so i'm going to do my widget here the anchor is a bit finicky just finicky around with it you, you get it eventually but it's it's a bit it's a bit annoying but it, it is what it is now besides current time uh in here you can also do another option where if i have the same timer you can also do another thing where uh you can also get the current time in seconds now if you look at it it's is an in 32 while this is uh f text so uh to actually do this uh you can't do it like this because if you try to do that it'll, it'll break since it's an int and you're putting it into text you need to convert it so we're going to convert the function and we're going to get a two text integer and then we're going to then grab the current time in seconds and what this will do bit now is it's going to get the current time in seconds and then it's going to convert it to a text because it's an int so we convert it to a text using the conversion function here and then it's going to go into the text the text block. also at the same time i'm just going to remove the old one just to show you what it looks like and as you can see now it's going to be as a number of, of the seconds just as the you know
know, the number of seconds, not the minutes and seconds. Now this is cool and all, but it's a bit, it's a bit bland. Like, look at this, the number going down. So how do we make it actually look cool? Like, how do we make it look kind of, kind of, kind of sick? But to actually do that, we're going to make HUD widget animations. Now it's going to be pretty simple, uh, but we're going to make it so it's going to flash uh, a color. So what I want to do is, I'm going to give it a seconds. So I'm going to make it look like that. But what I'm going to do is, in animations, I want to make three animations. And I want, I want the animations to display uh, at certain times and intervals during the, the animation. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get, I'm going to a new animation. And this is going to be, I don't know, 30 seconds to 20 seconds. I'm going to call it 30 to 20. Then we're going to have another one for uh, like 1 to 10. I will have one last one for 10 to uh, 0. Now I'm going to actually delete these because I'm just going to duplicate this one. But uh, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to add timer to here. And then in here, this is our little like thing. I'm going to make it so it's on, on one second. So every second this is going to happen. Or should I? Yeah, that's fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab color and I'm going to uh, make it make it a different color. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to key it and I'm going to key it. So it's Stay white so a minute or seconds over then halfway through i'm gonna make a flash of color so i'm gonna make it so it's orange yeah that that, that can it's even get yellow a yellow color no that's fine we'll do that so so when it gets low it's for every second it's gonna go you know it's gonna flash yellow i should be more accurate i'm gonna make it so i'm gonna rename this to uh 21 seconds because we're gonna do 20 to 11 and then 10 to 1. so we're gonna do 30 to 21 seconds so it's going to do this it's gonna flash color and i also maybe want to transform it too so i'm gonna go into transform and i'm going to just i'm gonna scale it only so i'm just gonna delete everything else except for scale i uh, don't have to do that but it makes it simpler look at and i'm gonna key it here i'm going to then key it at the end at one second and then here i'm going to just make it a bit bigger like that maybe like Point one bigger and that's going to make it so pulsates oh shit i need to keep the other one so now this is going to work so ow so here we have an animation for 20 30 to 21 and also what i might do is i'm gonna add i'm gonna add an audio track and i'm gonna add ticking so it's gonna make a little tick noise so like like that tick every second easy perfect and for this case right now i'm gonna make the thing volume about 0 0.5 so it's not gonna be as loud so it's gonna be slightly slightly not as loud i'm gonna keep pitch at one now we're gonna duplicate this so we're gonna right click it and then press duplicate and this is gonna be 20 to 11 now in this one what we're going to do is in here in the color and opacity we're going to make the volume of this slightly louder so one then the pitch may be slightly faster 0.2 so it's going to go that sounds slight, slightly different. Then in the color and opacity, I'm gonna make it some color slightly darker. So I'm gonna make it three, maybe even, maybe even zero two. There we go. So it's gonna go like this. Perfect. So it's gonna have a bit more intensity onto it. And then last but not least, we're going to do another one and I'm gonna duplicate it again. And this is gonna be 10 to one. So this is gonna be the, like the final bit, the final countdown. Actually, I'll get a cover so I can really sing that. Um, so I'm gonna keep it G zero and I'll be red. So it'll be, it's not gonna be urgent. So it's gonna be like, oh no, it's starting. We'll do the pitch pretty high. Then what we can also do is in the audio, we can add another sound something like this or like like that like this you know i'll do this there we go so now it's gonna go the last few seconds so now we have an animation for uh 30 to 21 10 to 11 and then 10 to 1. So now to actually bind these, we're gonna select our widget and we're gonna go view bindings. And what we're gonna do is we're going to make a condition. And we're gonna make a few conditions. And so our first condition is we're gonna grab a we're gonna grab current time in seconds. So when the seconds are in a certain range, we're going to loop the sequence. And then if it X's it, we're gonna stop the sequence that's looping. So for example, we're gonna do we're gonna do between and including. I'm just gonna make a low range. And since our first one is 30 to 21, this is our lower value, so it's gonna be 21 and 30. So when the timer seconds are in between 21 and 30, it's going to then we're gonna go to here. Here, I'm going to do Q play animation and we're going to Q play our animation for that, which is going to be it's not here because we have file no, in animation it will be uh, 30 to 21. I'm going to add that. Then, what you can also do that, what you can also do, you can make loops to play. You can either put it the exact number you need, but I'm going to keep it at uh, pretty high because I'm just going to loop it infinitely. And then, I'm also going to do restore state to well, actually, now that I think about it, we actually don't need to loop it because every second it's going to it's going to update. So, if it's once it reaches 30, it's going to play the animation, and then once it reaches 29, it's going to play the animation again, 28, play the animation again, and so on, so on and so forth. So we actually don't need to loop it. I actually don't need to do it. We actually don't. Now I think about it. So we just keep that to this. And then we're going to add another condition. And we're going to add it, the same exact thing. And between including. But this time it's going 20 to 11. And you probably can tell. We're going to Q play animation. And it's going to be our 20 to 11 animation down here. There we go. Perfect. And then we're going to turn on restore state. Then final condition. And this is going to be our last current time. Uh, we're going to do a between including. And this is going to be 10 to 1. There we go. And then we're going to do our timer hood. And then we're going to grab our uh, Q play animation. Sorry. 
our one two play animation and then in here in our in animation that we're going to identify get our last one which is our 10 to 1 animation and we're going to restore state now this should work so if we just compile this and then we go out and we just post our changes so now if i start my game you're going to see that the timer is going to be relatively normal it's going to be 60 59 so on and so forth they're like completely the same so now once our timer reaches 30 seconds it's going to look a bit different it's going to start pulsating so now it looks like our first one let's start ticking then once it reaches 20 it's going to do its next stage which is going to be um it's going to be slightly darker and it's going to be slightly louder in the ticking and then once it reaches its final 10 seconds it's going to then it's now going to be in its final stages i'm just gonna be like oh god it's beginning and then once it ends it's going to go away there we go the timer will end now if you don't want that to happen remember inside of here completion behavior is is is, is a bunch of different ways like stop disable reset and restart uh, there's a bunch of different options in here you can change and now also what we can do is in here if you remember there's an option called urgency mode and urgency mode time is five seconds and what we can do is with urgency mode is that let's say for example it's urgency mode so ooh, it's urgency we can we can add in a text block that's like our timer is about to end like this well then red that right above we can add a little red. what this is going to work is that invisibility we're going to make it so it's hidden so it's going to be hidden and game starts so we can see that first and then we're going to we're then going to go into animations and then we're going to go make a new animation it'll be our urgent our urgent we're going to add our text block into here and we're going to just going to make it visible i'm not going to do any animation but we're just going to make it so it's visible and so during the last five seconds which is how long this is it's going to be visible it's going to say timer is about to end and then once it ends i'm actually with this up because it's going to pulsate into it there we go and once it ends it's going to end and then it's going to go away and then to actually play this animation we're going to add a new condition and we're going to get the current time in here and we can we can either do it so it's in between five and one or we can also use this thing called is urgency which is a, a boolean we can check and to make it so make sure it is urgency you want to make sure this is the one because booleans are either true or false and with numbers tr tr true is one and false is zero so we're going to keep this as one so if urgency is happening then we're then we're going to play the urgency animation which i need to compile to get so we're going to grab uh our urgency which is going to be this urgent oh sorry cue play animation what am i doing and we're going to grab our in animation which is urgent there we go we're going to turn on restore state so now depending on this setting in here our urgency mode time that's when this message will show up and then until it ends it's going to disappear there we go perfect so then what we can do is we'll just compile this and then we're going to go plus our changes so now if i and now if it hits uh we're gonna wait it's not urgent yet it's at five seconds it's urgent and once it hits urgency which is now it's gonna say timer is about to end I for, actually i forgot to anchor correctly but it, there we go it worked <laughs> let me see if you hear that it, it looks like okay you should probably use a different queue uh, instead of that power up uh queue timer thing because it actually doesn't really work that well well so yeah that's how you make a custom timer and you can do whatever you like after it ends uh, but this is how to show you what you can do really and just like if the urgency there's also ones for paused and unstarted so you can so you can have your own little messages is on what you want to do so yeah so yeah, that about do it for the video hope you like subscribe remember to use my code in the front arm shop and thank you to all of our members of the channel and remember to watch all of these videos for more of my tutorials that's about it i'll see you all around